What's, what's up, up everybody? everybody welcome back to another video in this video we're going to be doing something that's been very highly requested um a mug bomb that's a mug i had to say it y'all i have watched so many muck bangers who said muck bomb so i just thought it'd be funny to say it uh whoa and um I could, I this is like the first <laughs> This is like the first um, <clears throat> like time we've been able to eat like something that we would consider junk in a while because of my procedure. But we're going to chick fil a We love Chick-fil-A. We love Chick-fil-A. We love Chick-fil-A. So good. We just don't live close to one, so we hardly ever get it. <sighs> yes, um, that's a struggle. He told this lady he wanted two of every two sauce. Of every sauce, and she was like, two of every sauce. But we got Chick-fil-A Chick sauce. Uh, zesty buffalo sauce. Show you guys what we got. Um, another Chick Fil A sauce. Barbecue. Mm -hmm. If you know Susan, she does barbecue. Normally, I have sugar free though from Walmart, and that's my favorite. Have fries, which you can already tell we're eating some. We ain't even got nothing on the table. Um, they give us no ranch. I'm mad. What? Barbecue. I said two of every sauce. Um, two Chick Fil A sandwiches. I don't like their pickles, so they come off mine. And then we got a 12 count nugget. chicken nugget. All right, I mean, hey, that, that's a pretty good little smacking meal right there. You we didn't get a lot, a lot, but we did eat earlier with my family, so yeah. um, we kind of no, got a little so. sick from that gold corral. So, yeah. but well, we got to dig in. All right, guys, let's start this mug bang off. We're blessing the food. Lord, we thank you for this food. We pray that you would let it be for the nourishment of our bodies. Bless it. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And okay. Thank you for Chick-fil-A. So, Ooh. I've been doing this. <gasps> My eyes are... Ew. <laughs> Touch the nasty table. Okay, so, um, while we're doing this mukbang, it's not really a big mukbang, but it's okay. This is mainly um, to kind of tell y'all about my procedure. And it's a story time. Eat with y'all too. So Yeah, because you weirdos like to watch people eat. <laughs> so you can get your food, you can get your Chick-fil-A, wherever you're at, and just don't forget your Charlie. I forgot my sprite, so don't don't be like me. Um for, now I gotta drink this beyond. But we're gonna eat our food and we're gonna ba basically tell you all about my procedure and stuff. And if you don't like to see me eat because I am plus size and keeps going. I actually need that for myself. <laughs> um, but so basically, should I start or? Yeah, you can. But okay. also, I want to mention though, the guys that we've only had like one or two of these sauces, and we're gonna try like every sauce. That's why I got every I'm sauce. I'm not gonna try buffalo. I oh yeah, yeah. Though. You don't need to buy that. Try that. But um, I'm gonna start with the zesty, and, and we just. So he's eat. gonna start eating, and I'm gonna start like telling y'all some of the story um so about it was about two months ago huh yeah about two months ago um Trash can't be in <laughs> i woke up and i had felt really bloated um and i like it, it's normal for me because growing up i always had a hard time with like bloating and constipation tmi but it's part of the story so but I've always had trouble with that, so I figured that I was bloated. Um, it wasn't that bad when I woke up. Then Ethan came home. I think I made us uh, breakfast bagels with our little healthy bagel bite things we used to buy. And we ate, and then he left, and he went back to work. And around 2 o'clock, um, I just got this horrible, is it good? Mm -hmm. I just got this horrible pain right here, like in my like right bottom part of my abdomen like it was like a hor it was horrible i could not stand that pain um but it literally just felt like really bad constipation so um i tried to wait it out and <coughs> then i went and laid down and i just started <sighs> pickles i forgot to shake my pickles out <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway i went and i laid down in our bed because I, like normally that would help me if I'm laying on my side, giving my belly like time to like relax. 
normally that would help my um, either blood or constipation. So I did that and it, it just, it hurt way worse to lay down, to even like try to lay down than to just sit up. Um, so I got up and I laid over the side of our bed and then like I just, and it at was- at this point, she, you were in bad pain it was and she bad. was like screaming and, and like, I mean screaming. My husband, and I'm like, um, I'm like, you dude, I'm he, about to take her to the ER. Well, the thing is, before he even knew, like, he was at work and he was out, like, on the road. And they have, like, this true system. So, at that point in time, his phone couldn't get anything to it until he was, like, out of the truck. So, I called um, my, his grandma. And I told her, I said, I need you to hold Ethan. I need you to get a hold of Ethan. Um, and she sent Ethan's brother. I'm trying she to She sent Ethan's it. brother. Um, Ethan's brother's wife, or not wife, uh, fiance, to his job, um, and they went in and they told his boss, hey, y'all need to get in touch with Susan, she's in really bad pain. So when he got back, he called me, I was crying, I was like, babe, I don't like to bother you at work, but I need you to come home, I'm hurting, I can't, I can't handle this. He came home, and I was laying down what night, I was crawled up in the bed and I was crying, like I was in so much pain, and for me, I thought, okay, this is just really bad constipation. This is some really bad um, bloating. And so he went and got me some gas X and some laxatives and some apple juice to see if that would help me. I took it, nothing happened. Yeah, we're like hours in, it's yes, nighttime. Yeah, this is like midnight and then I'm still got no relief. I'm hurting, I can't handle it. Um, then I, I didn't sleep at all that night. I didn't sleep any at all. I, I stayed up trying to go to the bathroom because I thought this is some, just, this is really bad. I need to go to the bathroom really bad. But it wasn't that. And then it was like seven o'clock that morning. He was like, "You're going to the hospital." He said, "At this point, there could be something wrong. Um, you need to go to the hospital. You need to see." Because I already knew that the if they can wasn't get you working. some help. Yeah, it should have already been helping me. So I was like. At first, I was in denial. I didn't want to go to the hospital. I've always waited it out. But then I, I sat there on the toilet and I was like, you know, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. And I'm going to do some help. I'm going to give me something for constipation. Help me really, help relieve me fast. It'll be okay. But I got there. Um, for one, COVID in Louisiana, they still don't let anybody in the hospital with you unless it's an emergency, like real bad. So I had to go in by myself. And they took me in this little room with two double doors. <coughs> and uh, then they came in there and they were like, well, we're going to take a CT. We're going to draw some blood. So they drew my blood and they came back for my CT. And then I came back to the room and I was sitting there, of course, texting Ethan. I was a nervous wreck. So he was texting me the whole entire time. Um, and then the nurse came in there and she was like, well, they want to start an IV on you. I'm like, why do you have to start an IV on me? I mean, y'all haven't told me anything about why I need an IV. And then the other nurse came in and she was like, well, your CT came back. I said, but y'all still aren't telling me why I need an IV. Like, why do I need an IV? But the lady, I was like, you go ahead and just put an IV in me, I guess. Um, she tried and she just kept, she literally blew my veins up. I was like, you can't do it. You're just gonna have to stop. So she took it out and then my, not my doctor, but the doctor that was at the, hospital that day come in there and I when he told me what he told me I literally started crying and I wanted Ethan right away they he told me when he came in there he said you have this big mass probably the size of a volleyball on your stomach it, it was right here and um, he said I'm calling the surgeon that was, that was right across the road we're gonna see what he wants to do um, he was making me think that I'm fixing to be going into emergency surgery right now. I didn't know what this was. He said it looked like it was coming from my right ovary. I was scared. I texted Ethan. I said, I had this huge mass in my stomach. I said, I'm scared. And I literally begged them to let Ethan come in there. And they finally did let him come in because they thought that I was going to have to have surgery that day. And then when he came in there, they came back in. They were explaining it to him too. At this point, we're both probably flipping out. He was more calm than I was. I was like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to, 
and the doctor was trying to reassure me I wasn't going to die. But then they came in there and they told me that um, the doctor said he would see me. I'll taste it in a minute. They told me that the doctor wanted to see me the next day at his clinic. So at this point, okay, I'm like, okay, I'm in relief um, because the doctor said, the doctor that, or the surgeon said that he thinks we have time. And so that gave me relief that I'm not going to blow up and die because that's when I felt like that I was going to blow up and die. Uh, well, because there was the chance that it could rupture. Yeah, and, and it would have been bad. Like he told me it wouldn't have killed me, but it would have been bad because of how big it was. Um, like this is something that has been causing me to gain a significant amount of weight. Like I have done my dieting, I've been eating, I was eating right, I was drinking the right, nothing but water, literally. I, I went to just straight water, I was eating right, it was just stir fries, salads, all, all that healthy food. And I could not lose the weight, like I just kept gaining weight and I was literally gaining significant amount of weight um, from this. But I went to my surgeon the next day and he came in there, he said, wow. He said, this is impressive. It was a, when I first went, it was a 30 by 18 centimeter ovarian cyst that was taking up my entire stomach right here. It was coming from my right ovary. Um, and he came in there and I started crying. I was like, oh my goodness, this is huge. He was like showing me in his hand size of how big he thought this thing was. I was scared to death because again, in Louisiana, you still have to go in the doctor's office by yourself. Um, and he was just like in his hand size, was trying to tell me how big he thought it was. Um, but then he was like, he's like, I'm just gonna go in surgically, like cut me open and stuff. He was, that's what they planned on. And just drain the cyst and try to save your ovary. Um, so I had pre up that next Wednesday, wasn't it? Oh, I had my COVID test on Monday which isn't as bad as people say it is. Um, but then I had my pre-op that Wednesday and uh, I went in, they did an ultrasound. They were gonna take blood and stuff. And <clears throat> he did the ultrasound and he was, I was like, I wasn't in any pain at that moment, but it had shrank down one centimeter, centimeter so it got like lifted off my bowels and stuff. So I wasn't in pain at that moment. And then he's like, well, <laughs> we're canceling surgery. He came in the room and said, we're canceling surgery. Um, I have a different plan for you. And then I was like scared to death. And I told Ethan, and he's probably thinking, wow, I'm probably healed or something. But I wasn't. But God knew what he was doing anyway. He knew I needed to find out about this. He knew that I needed to go through this procedure. But um, he got me and Well, on a side note right there, I'd like to say because she was talking about how god knew what he was doing and stuff like that see we're we're apostolic for people who don't know but we're very adamant on prayer we believe that prayer is a very strong thing <clears throat> in a christian's life and um she was praying and she was praying and i was praying and um i was wondering and she was just does sitting god here, even hear me she was just sitting here wondering like yeah does god even hear me she kept saying to me like why hasn't god just healed me i'm in so much pain i've asked god i've cried and she literally did she sat there and cried and cried and cried and continually just was wondering why god did not heal her and take this pain away that we assumed was constipation or gas or something along those lines and i kept saying babe there may be a reason why god hasn't done it yet and it might be things. because we need to know about something you know, or there's another underlying purpose for it. But what I wanted to say mm -hmm. by that is, for one, everything happens for a reason. Uh, trust the process and things and trust God's process and things. is trust in his provision and his guiding hand. Um, we may not understand things and why certain things may happen the way that they happen, but they all happen according to God's divine plan because... And at the end of the day, he is the creator and he is the one that sets our path before us and he knows exactly what's going to happen. So don't don't just, you know, and, and sometimes in situations like that, it's, it's hard <coughs> not to doubt God and not to it was be very confused me, about it. The but Bible says that God is not the I gained a lot of I gained a lot of faith during that time. But 
Um, so that's my side note. Yeah. Uh, but he got me in touch with this, this specialist. I'm going to eat some more in a minute. In case y'all didn't know, this is what I've been doing with a lot of my food lately. It's taking the top one off. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, he got me in touch with this specialist in Lake Charles. Um, and he told me he specializes in needles. And like, I was like, okay, well that sounds a lot better than it could open. Um, I was still scared to death. But, so I left the doctor's office that day. He was like, you can hear from them tomorrow. You can hear from a Friday or next week. I'm like, okay. At this point, he gave me some like nausea medicine help with my nausea and I wasn't in pain at all. Like, cause it had shrank down some. Um, but then almost a month went by. I haven't heard from the specialist. Oh. I'm wondering, Ethan at this point is getting upset with these I doctors. actually called this place, these doctors, a lot. And, and I was like, look, y'all told me a few days, and then y'all was going to let us know something, and then it was like a week, and then it was two weeks, and then it was three weeks, and I, I kept calling, and then they're like, stand by, we're going to call you. He was getting Never upset. He was really getting upset, because he saw how much- I'm like, my wife's in pain every day, and I watched this, and I was by her side through most of it, and, unless I was at work, like, but- for after I left the, the doctor's office that day, I did get relief from the pain. Like, I, I was in relief. So, I was like, okay, I'll make it. Like, even if they, I'm, I'm going to wait for them to call me. It'll be okay. Um, and I was good. Like, I was literally good. Then they called. They called, like, um, almost a month later. It was uh, probably over a month. And they scheduled for me an appointment and then had to reschedule me for the week week after the first appointment That's they had scheduled. Lot. And um, so I was like, okay, I've got one week. I feel fine. Um, then boom, PMS decided to just hit me out of nowhere. And I woke up, I had, we ain't eating Taco Bell. It's PMS. That, when it hit me, the PM, PMS hit me. He said, what a PMS, it's cracking me up. Um, it hit me and it was Tuesday night. Um, I hadn't really been eating much. So we got Taco Bell that night. Um, and I didn't eat much of that, but I ate like my taco and there was like a little chalupa in it. And then I went home, I was feeling fine. Um, then we went to sleep and I woke up, it was three o'clock in the morning excruciating pain i went to the bathroom i thought i had to go to the bathroom and i did go to the bathroom but then i came back in the room and i was standing up and i was like babe i'm hurting so bad i need i'm hurting i'm like i can't stand this so i woke up at three o'clock that morning i got sick and um i got relief after i got over that sickness but then i was still in so much pain like i was hurting so bad that i literally begged Ethan to stay home with me I couldn't handle it. I told him, I said, I can't handle this. I can't handle being here by myself. I need you with me. But he ended up having to go to work anyway because he already missed three days from being sick. So I'm sitting here at home. It, worst pain I've ever felt in my life. I'm like, this procedure just needs to get here. It needs to get here now. I'm hurting. I can't handle this. It like, went on for about a month. Yeah. Any, any movement was hurting me bad. Like, it was literally hurting me. So... After about a week, it was the day before my procedure, I was probably in the worst pain I've ever been in my life. And he had to go to work again that day. He had stayed with me two days before that. And I was scared to death. I didn't want to go. I wanted to just God just heal me. I didn't even ask Ethan that night before the procedure. I said, why did God just heal me? Why do I have to go through this? And so we had to go to Lake Charles. We had to get up at 5 that morning, 5.30, and leave. And we got to the hospital around 8.33. We were like three minutes late. But they were the fastest hospital like ever. We got there. I signed in. Got registered. They sent me upstairs. Got my IV in. Ten minutes later, they come and took me downstairs, huh? Yeah, I was about that. Yeah. And if you guys were on the live stream, I went on live stream on Instagram. I was waiting on my wife to return. It was about probably 40 mm -hmm. minutes. And they brought her they back. They took me downstairs. 
I was sitting in the hallway and if anybody, if you know me, I can even share this on my story. So you, some of y'all might have already heard it. Um, I had my pastor give me a prayer cloth <coughs> that he prayed over. Um, and then I prayed over and Ethan prayed over and we got in the like, prayer line at our church, prayed over. Like I had it in my hand and I was sitting in that hallway and I was crying and praying by myself. Like I felt so alone, even though I knew Ethan was right upstairs. I just, I even asked God in that hallway, I'm like, why do I have to go through this? Why can't you just heal me? And the lady come out and she was, started telling me, okay, we're going to aspirate the cyst, which I'm going to tell you how they did it. They, I'm going to tell you how they did it. They came and they went and they brought me into this room. Kind of looks like a x-ray room, but it's not. It just had this big, real big light above the table. And they had this ultrasound machine beside me with this big TV on it. And they came in there and uh, she, uh, my doctor told me exactly what they were doing. And I was like, I'm gonna talk you through it. It's gonna be okay. So they come in there, she said, it's gonna feel like a bee sting. It's gonna feel like a really bad bee sting. For like the numbing shot. And right here, he put a numbing shot and then he popped the catheter into me and my sis and <laughs> and drained all the fluid literally it was seven liters which is 15.4 pounds that they took off my stomach so if you see me looking skinny that's why i i also lost a bunch of weight the two weeks before because I only ate probably like 10 bites of salad in that two weeks. And a sand, probably a Subway sandwich. So it was about, ew. You, you know, that was my problem. But you know, <laughs> uh, another side note I want to make, because she didn't mention this, but the doctor um, that initially, when we first went in, and it was the first time at the hospital, the doctor initially said when we first went in that this cyst, had actually been growing for a long time Slowly. probably a few years so we're thinking i mean we've been together for five years and in, in, uh, i've had two miscarriages five years and when uh, in december december yeah december and we've been married four years in june um so i mean we've, we've been together a good some time and we're thinking well most of our time together you know this thing's probably been growing but my stomach was getting bigger and i just thought i was gonna wait another thing that i was then this was my this was my point of my side note um when me and my wife were doing tiktok and you know me and my wife got really big on tiktok or whatever i guess one million is big i don't know by the way but basically they gave us strips and not negative and they names. also said my name is steve i ain't no steve steve yeah but anyway, um, when we were on TikTok, a lot of people made fun of my wife for her stomach or Being how big round. her stomach was. They and would how, call us the number 10. Yeah, like, and you know, it, it kind of, I mean, that, that broke my heart, the fact that people would even do that. But my point being is, for one, don't make fun of overweight people. Don't make fun of bigger people, skinnier people. It don't matter. Just respect you everybody the way they are because you don't know what they're going through. And even we didn't know what we were going through know. for years. But yet people always was making fun of her on TikTok for her stomach being the way it was. And literally, you know, little did we know it was an underlying medical condition mm -hmm. that we would not even know nothing about until up until this point. He'll so, insert my picture right here. Yeah. He can just cover me up. Um, the before... Of this, you could see the cyst and how big it was and how round. And then after the day, day after my procedure, I did a before. Like right yeah, I don't like that. But it was a before oh, I like it. picture. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that I took. I saw that I wasn't eating like all throughout, but oh, there's a hair on it. Whoa, hair. bro! It's hard for me to talk and eat at the same time. Mm -mm. But anyway, nah, whenever I got this, went to that procedure and I drained it, I found out that this big cyst had been growing from my ovaries very slowly. 
for probably a couple years since after me and him got together. And I'm lucky it's not cancerous. I'm blessed. I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. And I thank God for it. And my ovary got to stay. I didn't have to get my ovary cut out. Um, what a bag yet. But the thing is, the, through this procedure, it's over here. I'm not a Chick fil A sauce. You can use some of mine. What the? I'm not going to use a lot. Um, oh, through this procedure, I have gained a lot of faith. I gained a really, like, I love my husband to death, and I did before this, but I gained a very strong love. Oh, I hope so. I gained a very much stronger love and, like, appreciation, and I don't take him for granted. I didn't take him for granted, but, like, I will never take him for granted. Like, all I wanted to do after my procedure, even my nurse would tell y'all, I literally said, I want to go see my husband. I want to see my husband. Can I go back to my husband yet? So the nurse brought me herself just because I asked so much instead of having the transportation come bring me back up there. <clears throat> but I gained so much faith and so and I had so much peace once I was on the bed and I had my prayer cloth in my hand. And, 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 and it may not seem like a big deal to you guys or to other people and this may seem like something small and we're just telling a story, but to us, this was really big. This was something that was really big in our life. And it, it was about um, the duration of a month to a month and a half that we went through this. And I mean, I'm, we're not even talking about the nights that she couldn't sleep in the bed. We had to bring a recliner in the room and she has to sleep in a recliner for weeks and weeks because she can't even get comfortable in bed because of the cyst. Mm -hmm. um, me I having can't. to help her up every 30 minutes off the bed or so. You know, helping her get dressed because of her limited movement due to the cyst. I mean, like, it's seriously, and, and I hated, I truly hated to watch her cry and go through this pain and torment and agony. And uh, we're believing it's for a better purpose because, I mean, we've been trying to have kids since we got married. And now, we were told that I can't this, have babies. This has been. And I found out <laughs> that, that you're very fertile after this kind of procedure. Um, me and Ethan do want to try for so a baby. <laughs> so, <Keep going. laughs> we're just giving uh, me time to heal and stuff. We want to try for a baby. But we're getting to where we know God is trying to bring us and stuff. But I don't know. This whole thing just changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I'm very thankful that it was found. And I got it drained and taken care of. And of course, there's always a chance because I didn't, they saved my ovary and didn't take it out that it, I could get more, like another cyst one day. But the fact of the matter is, I'm now in with a doctor that I can get my monthly checkups or my yearly checkups. I can, like, keep an eye on these things. Um, his, <laughs> his chicken strips. His uh, brother's fiance, her, she had one the size of a softball. That so she got removed a month before I got my, mine removed. Um, but I was lucky, not lucky, I was blessed with this. I didn't have to be cut open. I didn't lose my ovary. Um, I'm still able to have kids. And God just, I think God really knew what he was doing when he brought this to light. And it's going to be a really long video because... It was a really long story. Like, it was really long. Like, that whole month was long. It was just bad. But now, but I won't forget I'm the smile. better. I won't forget the smile on her face, though, when they roll her in on that bed. And I was just like, man, you can tell she's not in pain no more. She's finally happy. I have, like, it meant a lot to me. Achiness from that big cyst that they drained. But I just walked around a big mall. A big mall's uh, arcade place, and I didn't hurt not one bit. So, I'm healing. But yeah, he'll insert my before and afters and show y'all how massive this thing really was. Um, this isn't your typical muck, typical muck bay. Um, no, but you know, like uh, click me, you know, what I'm saying, like. <laughs> Well, we were talking about, go ahead, do we thing. wanted to go ahead and eat and not have our food cold. And, you know, some of y'all wanted us to do this. Because we've been pressed But also, be able to tell y'all about this. But. Now we're going to eat. So y'all just going to have this really, really long video of 
a story and somewhat even. Yeah, and we can call it a mukbang. And you know, if YouTube wants to give us a bunch of subscribers and views, I mean, you know, cool. I'm not gonna complain about it or nothing. But if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to slap a like on it. Yeah, look at me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Since all this has happened, and since the procedure, I can't even eat the bread. Hey, let me get some of that bread. I'll, you can I'll have it. I sandwich. can't even eat the bread anymore on the buns because it makes me so full. Yeah, I'm telling you, my stomach. Hmm, I bet. Where the food goes and stuff went from like this to like the size of a grapefruit in but, that one day. I have not been able to finish a full meal since that procedure, but I guess it's a good thing. I, I get really full though, like fast. But anyways, make sure to drop a comment in the comments. Let us know what you want to see next, what kind of mukbangs you want to see. If you want us to eat something specific, let us know for some reason. Mm, I'm mukbangs are popular and this is just something that was highly requested for us to do even though this wasn't like a real mm -hmm. mukbang maybe one day we'll do like a no talking mukbang type thing whatever you know I don't know but she you know, only ate that chicken patty and I'm you got some weird people out there that just want to watch some weird stuff and we're going to be the weird people that maybe it to you yeah anyways this guys this one's not as weird though this was me like basically we love you thanks for uh, stopping by and watching our video we'll see you in the next one